Foam rolling has increased in popularity in the last couple of years. And to be honest, I also have one in my physical practice. But what do these foam rollers do? They call foam rollers myofascial release devices, but do they even release myofascial? And people often use them to speed up a recovery or they use them to relieve back pain or to lengthen their iliotibial band. But does foam rolling help in these cases? So what does it really do and does it live up to these high claims? So let's start with the question, if foam rolling actually releases myofascia? And when we Google this question, we get the following answer. Foam rolling is the application of pressure to eliminate scar tissue and soft tissue adhesions by freeing up your fascia. And the good news is fascia and trigger points can be released. But man, that's a false statement. And this is again why you should always second guess what Google has to say. But these lines are making multiple statements. So let's look closer at each one. The first one. Foam rolling is the application of pressure. Okay, that one is right. Everybody who has used a foam roller before knows that you put pressure on your tissue. But this wasn't, of course, the statement I was talking about a minute ago. So let's move to those statements. Foam rolling is the application of pressure to eliminate scar tissue and soft tissue adhesions by freeing up your fascia. But what is fascia? And I will not Google this one. <laughs> but Fascia is connective tissue that surrounds everything in your body. So it surrounds blood vessels, organs, bones, muscles, tendons, and nerves. And we can even split this into the superficial and deep fascia. But I won't be going into that one. So now we know what fascia is. What happens to this fascia when we start to roll it with a foam roller? As you may probably think, we are compressing the fascia because we put pressure on it. But if we want to eliminate scar tissue or soft tissue adhesions, like the statement and everybody on social media says, we want to pull it away from each other, right? And that doesn't really happen, or that doesn't even happen, with foam rolling. So we need to put this myth back to bed. So let's move to the second statement. Foam rolling can release trigger points. Okay, let's start with the question, what are trigger points? Well. To be completely honest, we don't really know. People said for years that trigger points are knots in muscles or also called toe bands or that the muscle fibers are cramped. But research shows that we can find them on an MRI, ultrasound or when we take a piece of the tissue. So we don't know exactly what they are. And there is some evidence that they're just tender points. But more on that in the next video. But those tender points do back up the working mechanism behind foam rolling because foam rolling probably works because you generate a painful input to your nervous system that activates a system that inhibits pain. The diffuse noxious inhibitory controlled or also called the DNIC. So it works by modulating your pain by achieving short term effects on performance, recovery and range of motion. So we don't know exactly what happens when we foam roll. but what does the evidence tell us about the effect on performance and recovery? A big study from 2019 concluded that the effect of foam rolling on performance and recovery are minor and almost neglectable. A different study from 2020 found a large effect on acute range of motion in favor of foam rolling compared to no exercise, but no superiority to stretching. And there are also people who state that foam rolling with vibration is better than foam rolling without vibration. But the study from 2020 didn't find any differences between the two. So there are no big differences because of foam rolling. And small individual studies found differences in favor of foam rolling. But if we combine those studies, there are no big differences anymore. And that's exactly how we think about it. If you like to use a foam roller and it works for you, use it. Because it works in small populations. And on the positive side, there are no downside effect to it besides the fact that it uses time from your workout. And if we look at a study from Youth et al. from 2019, they recommended a minimum of 90 seconds per muscle group. So if you want to do your whole body, it takes a lot of time from your workout.
So if you don't expect foam rolling to release your scar tissue or adhesions, lengthen your iliotibial band or reduce your pain by a ton, you can use it. But know that you can also use your time to do a proper dynamic warm-up. Alright, I hope this video helped to answer your questions about foam rolling and if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more health, information and rehab related videos. And if you need someone who needs to see this video, send them this video. And if you need some help with your injury, consider booking an online appointment with us at yourphysio.online. The link is in the description down below. This is Arjan, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.